Hello, everybody. I definitely went live thinking I was on my other profile, my personal one, um, but I was not. I was on here. But who cares? Because that's what happens. Life happens. And <laughs> you guys are all coming on here anyway. So, how is everybody doing this Tuesday afternoon? And I want to know what you guys had for breakfast and for lunch. Anybody? Oh, hi, mom. <laughs> My mom is on. I love that. Um, yeah, so what did you guys have for breakfast and for lunch today? If you had breakfast, if you had lunch, just curious. I had a yummy shake this morning, and I also just made a salad um, for lunch. But the way that I did it was especially different today. And I'm excited to tell you why it was so different than anything that I have done in the past. Um, okay, so I think we've got everybody on here right now. I mean, we've hopefully we'll have more people come on. But, um, oh yes, spinach, banana smoothie, eggs, turkey, omelet. Yes, yummy, love it. Okay, yogurt and banana salad, salad for lunch, oatmeal for brekkie. I like how you said brekkie. A vegan burger garden salad for lunch. Boom, toast and a smoothie. Pork chops for lunch with carrots and ranch. Hey yo, I don't know the last time I've had pork chops. Good for you. Um, I ate oatmeal with flax seeds and blueberries. Hi Chanel. Amazing, okay, well, Today, I am so excited. Um, first and foremost, I just wanna tell you guys that uh, we're just so grateful that you're a part of our community and that you guys are interested in what we have to share because at the end of the day, we just wanna offer authentic and focused and supported information for you guys to live your most extraordinary lives. And that is why today I'm so excited to introduce you to our first Kinergy expert, and that is Mona Sharma, who is a, a extraordinary woman who is just, I don't know, first and foremost, her heart is just stunning. Um, second of all, she is just an absolute expert in nutrition and wellness, and not in the way that most people think about nutrition or dieting or how you have to do it a certain way, but really back in like how we at Kinergy see things with, with, with the philosophy of just connecting to yourself. So I'm so excited to introduce you to the beautiful Mona and I am going to get her on here so that we can pull her up. Where is she at? Do I see her? I think she's on. Let's find her. There's got to be a better way for this. I'm telling you what. I think <laughs> I think we're going to have a um, conversation with Instagram since we're all doing these lives anyway. We've, there's got to be an easier way to do this. Let's find where she's at. All right, I'm gonna keep talking until I see. Um, Mona, if you are on here, did you already request? Oh, there you are, I see you. Here we go. Everybody, welcome Mona. Come on in. Oh saying it's waiting it's connecting yay <laughs> finally oh my goodness how are you doing i'm good my love i'm listening to what you had for breakfast this morning yes i <laughs> well you helped me create that so <laughs> i'm excited to one talk about that and what i am on personally and and my regimen for what i felt like i needed especially during this time but before we get there i just want to introduce mona and just give you a little background so mona is an expert nutritionist, educator, and entrepreneur in the health and wellness industry. And she is the founder of Hickama Life and brings her extensive research on the gut microbiome. 
and its impact on our health and happiness to clients all over the world. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen Red Table Talk, but uh, she works with the Smith family. Uh, Mona works with me and so many other people around the world. And we are so excited that she is um, so generously offered her time and her energy and um, commitment to, to helping people's people's uh, perception of what nutrition and health really is about and bringing it back to the soul level. So thank you, Mona. Mm -hmm. Welcome, Mona. Thank you, my love. Thank you so much. Um, so tell us a little bit about how your story, how you got into nutrition and wellness and how you made your shift. Yeah. So I think a lot of people, when they start working with me, they expect me to start talking about food right away, right? What diet, what food? I don't think we talked about food until our second or third conversation even, right? Yes. And this has to do because I lived this process. So I have to flash back and share a little bit growing up. So my dad is East Indian. My mom is Danish, but my mom has only ever suffered from severe debilitating uh, autoimmune disease, so rheumatoid arthritis. My dad being Indian and having this foresight, you know, of Ayurveda and healing the body would take us to live at an ashram every summer. Mm -hmm. For those of you who don't know, ashram living basically is a spiritual center that you can go to. And it's a place where they really, really focus on, you know, how you think positive thinking, movement, meditation, the quality of your food, being, you know, in a positive environment, being in community. And it was there that I saw firsthand the healing power of food. Mm. But of course, like as a kid, I was told to meditate at 530 in the morning, like who <laughs> wanted to do that? I didn't get it. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. So flash forward in my 20s, I started working the typical corporate job scenario. I worked for a handful of luxury cosmetic companies and on paper, it sounded amazing. I was able to, you know, do makeup for fashion shows, work with celebrities and travel the world and train people that worked in all these glamorous places. But I was 40 pounds heavier. I had two heart surgeries at that time for this electrical issue. Not one doctor, by the way, at that time asked me about my stress, my diet, my life. Mm -hmm. um, I had debilitating anxiety. I was suffered from lack of fulfillment, like you name it, right? I was burnt out completely. And that's when I decided to really like throw in the towel. I took off. I went back to my roots because I remembered seeing, you know, I know about this place, right? And it was at the ashram. I became a yoga teacher, a meditation teacher, but I was forced into the kitchen. And that's where I really saw the power of food. And when I describe ashram living, honestly, you guys, it's really about if you have like a, a computer web browser open, you're essentially going through each tab that's open in your mind, right? We all have these tabs open in our mind that are consuming us and shutting down every single tab. And what Ooh. that means yeah, it's like this, you know, ultimate return to self, self-compassion, self-love. You're forced to tune in to listen to the, what the body is trying to tell you. And, you know, I think that even in our conversation, how many of us have lived with these symptoms, or I call them whispers, right? And those whispers get louder and louder and louder. For me, it turned into a massive scream, and I got sick, and I had to completely change my life. So since then, this is how I work with my clients. Um, but I was also very much, you know, in the understanding, people would come to me for weight loss, right? Um, but they wouldn't necessarily be happy on the other end. The celebrities yeah. that I worked with, right? You know, they had complete disconnection with food on their bodies and how it made them feel. So I, I knew that there was something more to it. I ended up becoming an NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming Practitioner. So this is really to just get to the root cause of imbalance. I love that because the root cause is always, I mean, and, and we talk about the root in everything, whether it's an acting, like what's the root of the issue before you actually come in and do a scene so that you can have that depth, right? Well, same thing in Kinergy, same thing in life, same thing in food. It's like, if we're just keep putting on these band-aids of what we think we should be doing versus what we're actually feeling and knowing how to connect to that feeling, um, then it's not sustainable. So I love that you're talking totally. about the root. And isn't that what a diet is anyways, right? Like we're yeah. all looking for the right, the perfect diet. 
when I got really sick, by the way, I was like on a hardcore diet. I was, you know, hardcore at the gym, hardcore and everything, but I was still overweight. I was still anxious. I was still sad. And it's funny when I do these conferences with people, I'll ask people like how many people here even, how many people here suffer from anxiety, mm -hmm. worry, fatigue, bloating, constipation, issues with their skin, an issue in their mind where they feel out of control, zero to a hundred, I call it, right? All of these things are imbalances and these are those whispers, your body, we have this, you know, amazing communication system for our body to tell us when something's out of whack. And again, I'm seeing all these hands go up. Yes, yes, yes. Um, all of these symptoms, we live in a society where they're normal in a sense, right? They're so common. But we need to understand that just because they're common does not mean they're normal. Just because they're common does not mean that they are normal. And, you know, we live in a state of hyper wellness, don't we? Like, especially with, you know, everything that's going on in the world the internet got very loud of like what to do, what to buy, the protocol yes. to go on, do this diet, take that supplement, right? And people went into hysteria. Oh yeah, right? I, I am one of those people for sure. I mean, I, I, I know that in my past, what, what worked for me was uh, results and succeeding and, and just pushing and knowing that I could, I could get something if I just worked harder, if I just pushed harder, and, and if I tried all the things, <laughs> but wasn't really actually listening to those whispers or my own body of what was authentic and unique to me. And who can go hardcore for a long time, right? I think a lot of us live with a way of being that only gets us so far. And this is exactly when we say like this process of healing it's a journey. You never arrive at the perfect health. You never arrive at the perfect mindset. We are evolving literally at a cellular level every single day, which means that every day needs to be an opportunity to reset based on what your body needs that day. Mm -hmm. So how can you, um, I know with our conversations that we've had and a lot of them didn't even have to do with food at the, with the forefront, um, how can you give a little digestible <laughs> um, walkthrough of, of some of the questions that you ask your clients. And maybe we can all just listen and start thinking about what we would answer. I love that. Yeah. You know, I think when I first start working with a client, there's two things that I need to address. Uh, on one side, it's your biology. I will never put somebody blindlessly on an eating plan with un without understanding their constitution. Every single person here has their own unique biology, their constitution that we can now understand through science where those imbalances are, right? So then we can make, you know, just accordingly what diets, uh, sorry, what uh, supplements that you have to be on. Mm -hmm. But the other aspect to this is understanding, well, what are your beliefs? What are your thoughts like every single day? Mm -hmm. What are you telling yourself? And a question I'll always ask is, you know, if I were to live in your head for 12 hours, would you want me to hear the thoughts that you're telling yourself? Mm. And Ooh. this I, yeah, this idea of, you know, it used to be woo-woo, right? Talking about our thoughts and our emotions and the fact that they communicate to our body, but this is also being backed by science. Yeah. And I know for me, you guys, <laughs> there was no way that I could have healed unless I addressed my belief system. I grew up with anxiety. I grew up with sadness. I grew up with a behavior around food that wasn't necessarily serving me. I was chasing an ideal that didn't really exist. I wasn't honoring my constitution. So it doesn't happen overnight. But when you think about this, I think that's what's most important for all of us, especially now that we've gone through this massive paradigm shift, is that when people say you have to quiet the voice in your head, it's not about quieting the voice in your head. It's about acknowledging the voice listening, in your head, hearing it, listening. Yeah. yeah. Tuning in. What is it saying? And then choosing, is it accurate or is it not? Mm -hmm. Is it fueling optimal health or not? Mm -hmm. And I think that this word mindfulness, you know, mindfulness is everywhere, but again, mindfulness just means that you are acknowledging mm -hmm. a certain symptom, acknowledging yeah. a way of being, acknowledging a behavior that's causing you to do certain things or act a certain way, acknowledging the relationships in your life. Are they serving you? Are they depleting you? Because I think at the end of the day, most people, if I were to say, you know, look at the food on your plate, if I were to give you two options, which is the healthier one versus not healthy, you would know 
Intuitively, yeah. you would know which is the healthier option, right? Mm -hmm. So why is it that we're living in, you know, this era of hyper wellness and yet anxiety related disorders are on the rise. Depression is on the rise. Cardiovascular disease, thyroid issues, you name it. They're all on the rise. It just, it doesn't make yeah. sense. And Do you think I a really lot of think, it too is, oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, I just think that, you know, when asking about my process, we can't escape to an ashram. I get that. But the system at the ashram ultimately is like peeling back all of the layers that have developed over time, all of the layers of imbalance um, that have accumulated, essentially, right? Absolutely. Well, and like, that's when I hear you say you talk about how like, so many things can fuel your body um, and your mind. And uh, is that, uh, you know, it's not just food, it's your thoughts, and you do have that choice. And, and, and so what are some, um, what are some ways that you are able to not quiet or not listen to those voices, but actually tune in? And is it through meditation? Is it through journaling? What are some ways that you, you actually have a practice to help you hear those voices and, and de decipher which one is fueling you for good or fueling you for bad? I think that whenever you ask yourself, if it makes you feel good, exactly what to follow. And a practice that I take my clients through that took me a really long time to develop uh, and really do myself, you know, I'll say, close your eyes. Imagine a time in your life when you felt happiness when you felt joy, when you felt peace, when you felt energetic, when you felt vibrant. And when I was doing this exercise, I was wondering, there weren't, you know, dozens of memories coming to my mind, which meant that I was starting to align. My habits and my rituals were aligning with somebody who was not happy, was aligning mm -hmm. with somebody who was sick, was aligning with somebody who was out of balance. And so I had to do a lot of soul searching. So something that's really helped me is you know, imagine if you could get up every single day aligning with your higher self, right? So really this work, it tends to be about vibration. I help my clients elevate their vibration, get out of the mm -hmm. thoughts and the feelings that are low, right? Anxiety, worry, tension, fear, and align with the vibration of happiness and joy and peace. That's where healing happens, right? Yeah. And we know you cannot heal a body that you do not love. So there was no surprise that I wasn't getting better. I was getting sicker, right? Mm -hmm. So first thing in the morning, try this exercise. You know, think back to a moment when you felt good. And it might have been for, you know, a split second. It could have been on vacation. It could be a picture of yourself when you, you were a little kid and you see yourself just like with this joy over your mind and your body. Mm -hmm. But when you align with that feeling, your body doesn't know the difference between it happening in the present moment mm -hmm. versus it happening in the past. So just like that, you've realigned with an emotion going to help you heal, right? And then over time, when I work with my clients, we, we elaborate on this. It goes from being a snapshot, so like a selfie going off in your mind, a picture that you can go to every morning, just feel that gratitude and that joy. And then we turn it into a movie reel. And the movie reel is think about many moments, think about many things, think about what you wanna create. Think about the feeling that you want. So if you're, you know, losing, if you're wanting to lose 20 pounds, if you're wanting to get the six pack, if you're wanting to all be happy when, start to think about the feeling of what it will be like at that moment. When you align with the feeling, then it becomes real. Yeah. I had to align with health and athleticism. I had to align with that in my head first before I could make it a reality. Mm -hmm. So that's the first thing. If visualization is hard for you, then you've got to move, right? Mm -hmm. The three pillars that I really take from the ashram are one, first and foremost, obviously food is medicine, but movement is therapy. It's mm -hmm. energy in motion. When I did a Kinergy class, I had a complete, you know, meltdown right there just in front of everybody else. And it was a release of emotions. People have the same experience when they're on the yoga mat, right? They just get up. It's emotion being released in the body. So mm -hmm. move your body first thing in the morning. And if that doesn't align with you, then really go to mindfulness because mindfulness is the therapy. Mindfulness is what brings us back to the journey every time we get out of alignment. And this could look like, you know, a gratitude practice, journaling. Journaling looks like something that you love and you're spreading the awareness around that. 
Um, and it could just I be, have so you know, many just... different things. <laughs> I, totally... I'm, I'm, I love I'm... that a person of variety. So I have all the different things and I, I switch it up constantly because I, I do listen. Cause if I do the same thing constantly, I get a little bored. And so I switch it up, but then I always come back and I always make sure that I'm balanced in a way where I find, I find the equal um, expression within each of these things that work for me. You've built a tool set, right? A whole toolbox of things that you can go into when you need them. And I think yeah. that's important, right? We are, you know, emotional beings. And I think that we're called to doing different things at different moments. And it's really about finding a system that works for you. Because otherwise, you know, remember, every single thing that you practice will become a habit, right? Yeah. Are you choosing the right habits? All of your habits are going to become your rituals, Mm -hmm. Rituals are things that we do every day, brushing our teeth, getting ready, doing our makeup, you know, making a phone call, do, having coffee. Um, but it's the rituals that become our way of life, right? You would never yes. skip brushing your teeth. So what's the ritual that's really going to fuel your heart so that you can align with the health that you want first? That yeah. will keep you committed longer than trying a new diet, than mm -hmm. thinking, I'm going to try that next, you know, look for the next gimmick that's out there or program that's out there. And it's really about aligning with what works for you. Honor that constitution. It took me years to learn how to love myself. And I think it's backwards that we don't teach children how to love themselves. Yeah. We were never taught this as children, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I, I'm so fascinated, especially this year. This is when I, you know, came to you. And I, I mean, we met last year. But this year specifically, I came to you saying, you know, I, uh, there's a lot of things going incredibly well in my life and I feel high vibration in, in my work and relationships and friendships and I was like, but something to do with my health is still not quite right. And, um, and what I realized was that actually was a part of all of it. They're not separate. They're all part of it. And the, the idea that I was feeling so great and high vibration all the time and everything, it was like I was addicted a little bit to that high energy and wanting to just keep containing that. And I got really, I mean, I've been so exhausted and so tired. And, and so we got, you know, my blood work done and to see what was going on. And, but even before that was happening, I mean, the questions that you asked me, you're like, are you stressed? And I even felt guilty, guilty saying that I was stressed because I'm so grateful for what I'm doing. And I love what I'm doing. But oh my gosh, I guess I am stressed because I'm, you know, constantly thinking about it. I have anxiety of, you know, I, I'm responsible for all these people, my my colleagues, my my teammates, um, all the people that I want to, you know, impact, um, and that pressure that I put on myself and the importance of it um, definitely fueled me. And it is coming from a good place, but it mm -hmm. still was a place of like wow, I'm going to burn out really quickly if I don't get this under a more balanced place. Um, and, and so, you know, even right now, I don't know if a lot of you guys know this, but I just started a 10 day reset today. I had a two day prior pre cleanse that I did. And, and the difference I've been on diets, I've been on like, you know, crazy things that have helped me lose weight really quickly, but then like blow up immediately after if I had mm -hmm. one piece of salt or sugar or something, you know? And so this, this experience for me, this is not to lose weight. This is not to, um, uh, just do something cause I'm bored. This is really a conscious intentional reset for how I want to feel and how I want to actually um, redefine my relationship with, with my body, with what I'm putting in my body. I know how to move my body. I know how to connect to myself where I feel free and I can, I can create that energy. But I don't think I have intentionally, whether it's what I've put into my body or what my expression of what I wanted to feel like was authentic. I think it was still a projection of, of what it should be versus how I just want to feel. 
And so this, you know, you, you touched on so many things there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. So you like one of the things that you told me was to, you know, wake up in the morning and think about that feeling. And so I, I've done that. And I've done cleanses and stuff where I'm really hungry after like the first hour and I'm like, like a, like an addict, I just want to eat food, you know, and this mm -hmm. I've just felt mm -hmm. so at peace and so excited. And like, my whole body feels like it could sustain itself for ever. It's really different. I love that you said that. So first, um, I think it's so important, you know, we feel guilty for complaining right? Yeah. We live in a society where when we ask someone how they are, they say, I'm okay, right? Or now it's just people are saying they're busy, but they're confused or lost. It's like, we're not giving each other the freedom to communicate. And it's not about bitching and it's not about complaining, but it's about letting it out, letting it out of our bodies, right? And to go back to that, to that idea of accumulation. So my dad was great growing up. He really talked about everything that really affects us, right? So when we think about accumulation, it's not just from the foods that we eat, right? The toxic foods that we eat that accumulate over time, but it's the toxic relationships, toxic thoughts, the emotions, the conversation from years ago that still lights you up the second you think about it or give it energy, the experiences that happened when you were a little kid that you've never dealt with, they are living in your body. So to your point about you've tried the diets and you know, you'll know you balloon afterwards, it's because all you've done through dieting is to put yourself into a state of stress and it feels deprived, right? Mm -hmm. It feels like you know it goes into survival mode because it doesn't know when it's gonna be fed again, which is what we do. And instead, it's just feeding the fire. Yeah. You know, it's not turning down these frequencies. And if you were to imagine all of those things, literally like radio frequencies, since you were a baby, these ties of things to people, emotions and events that are so loud, we try to ignore them, we muscle through, and we go, 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 and we go hard, and we want to be successful, and we want to be the best, we want to show up. And it doesn't work. We have to slowly go down and like literally turn down the dial on each of those knobs so that we get back to understanding what our instinct tells us, right? And when we think about the power of our gut, trust your gut, it, mm -hmm. that expression is there for a reason. Like it really yeah. helps. We have a guidance system within us. And I'll always say, you know, we have three hearts, the one in our brain that we think with, the one in our hearts that we feel with, and then the one in our gut microbiome that really does guide us towards the things that are right for our bodies and our path and our journey and the things that aren't. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love that so much. And speaking of, you know, the, the gut microbiome, just give us a little um, education behind that and like just why the gut is so important and you know, I mean, everything that you're saying right now, which is trusting your gut and that that instinct that we know what's right and wrong, but also just on the actual nutritional side of things, because I, I really would love to know, um, you know, there's like prebiotics and probiotics and all these different things to help your gut. Um, but I think the gut is the most important thing to understand. And there's so much information out there. So I would love to hear from you how you can kind of explain how we can have more understanding. Yeah, gut microbiome has been at the forefront for me for a long time. When my mom started to address autoimmune, we think about these imbalances happening within your gut because here's the thing, when you are stressed, your digestion actually shuts down. If your digestion shuts down, your gut microbiome has to take on the excess work to be able to break down those foods. We also know now that when you're taking in foods that are inflammatory, you guys might not feel a difference, but within your gut, like imagine we could see if we could see what was going on, right? So we know lots of people, you might be somebody yourself who suffers from IBS, from bloating, from constipation, from going to the bathroom too often. These are imbalances within the gut microbiome, also issues with our skin as a result of what's happening inside. So our gut, what we can do is like basic things, you know, go back to basics, reduce things that inflame the gut, right? We know the foods, obviously, go back to, you know, eating the rainbow is something I always say, whole foods, nutritious foods, foods that have a lot of color uh, and information, right? Food is information that will fuel your gut. 
The other thing that's so essential is, you know, we think about stress. We have this gut brain axis, right? Whenever we are stressed, some people will, you know, um, you might be somebody that runs to the bathroom when you get stressed or you can't eat or you feel like your stomach gets queasy. This is that gut brain connection. So in order to really optimize our gut microbiome, we first have to address our digestion and our stress levels. And I would say before any diet or you know change of eating plan or healthy eating regime, go back to those th two things, digestion and stress. And that literally will be the first phase of how you heal your gut microbiome. So with you, for example, you know we've taken out all inflammatory foods. We put you on a two day kitchery cleanse to really help ease the digestive process. Mm -hmm. Kitchery is an Ayurvedic dish that's been around for centuries and it's really designed to be something that's easy for the body to metabolize. Mm -hmm. And then now we're going in and we're optimizing. So we're optimizing your nutrition. I know that you have tons of color in your fridge. Mm -hmm. We're optimizing with good quality probiotics. Um, but I would say prebiotics. So obviously probiotics are everywhere. Uh, don't believe everything that you read. Remember, this is an industry that is booming mm -hmm. um, based on the consumer because we'll buy their products, but really look for reputable brands if you're looking for quality probiotics. Yes. Um, but if you want to really start before you even go to the supplements is look at food. So prebiotics are essentially the, the food that fuel good bacteria in your gut. And we want to optimize that good bacteria, um, which over time gets depleted, right? So things like jicama, I started a company after it. I'm so passionate yes. about it. Artichoke, right. garlic, onion, uh, leeks, bananas that are slightly green still. Those are prebiotic fiber, that starch that's there mm -hmm. to it is what feeds the gut A more microbiome. green banana is what you're saying? Mm -hmm. More good okay, banana. good to yeah. know. Mm. Not the and banana bread that hydration. we're making with those like really dark <laughs> bananas that everybody's making banana bread right now. <laughs> no, not so much. No, not with the and sugar. hydration. Wait, can I show you this? This is this is what I'm doing here. <laughs> so <laughs> good. My gallon a day for sure. This is me. Everywhere. Awesome. Take it with you everywhere. Yeah. That's amazing. Uh, honestly, I, I just for me, I get so excited when, when I meet people who have knowledge and expertise in an area that I'm so, you know, something that I'm, um, I'm just a, a constant student and I love to learn. Um, and so I get excited to, to be able to learn more and educate myself, but then also to just share with our community. And um, it, it's totally aligned with, with our philosophy with Kinergy, which is first to connect to self, then you can relate to others and then experience the world. And so if we're, if we're really constantly keeping like the connection to self as like a priority and, and listening to ourself and, and listening to those whispers, checking our gut, like that connection between our brain and our gut, um, we really do have all the power within us that we don't need to go outside of ourselves to, to um, see what everybody else is doing, what fad, what diet is working for them, because that's different. That's them. You know you. At the end of the day, just to pause and to, to really think about what it is you need, what your body needs. And so we're so aligned in that, and you help people connect back to themselves. And that's why I'm just so grateful to have this conversation with you and share, share your knowledge and expertise with our community. Thank you so much. Yeah. And, you know, like we all do have the same choices, right? But the choice is ours that we just have to decide in the same way that you decided one day that it's time to make a change. And once you make the decision, you really already start the process for aligning for this idea, this higher version of yourself. And when you do that, you awaken health that already exists within you, right? So I really think that it's about turning down the noise. It's really about, you know, using self-care it's about using your kitchen using food as medicine it's not food is like medicine food is medicine mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and you know optimizing sleep thinking about your community everything that you're creating at kinergy is all part of this like full spectrum that has to be looked at to really optimize health for the, for good right it's really a way of being for the rest of your life as opposed to trying a thing for a fad because we know that um they don't work right yeah. You know, one thing that has been different about this quarantine time as well is that in the past, I 
was working and I wouldn't prioritize the amount of time that I would take to actually eat. Um, I'd be running out the door and grabbing something or I would be booking meetings during lunch because I never even had a lunch. I would just work through lunch um, because I'm also just like that. Like the more I keep going, the more I'm creating energy. And so what's been really interesting about this time is um, and I get it. I have a luxury that I am, you know, I am able to work from home and um, a lot of people don't have that right now. But um uh, and are still out there working really hard to, you know, be on the front lines for us. But one thing that I've noticed this week, especially in this last couple weeks, is I've actually, like, planned an hour for lunch. <laughs> that it, I'm mm -hmm. actually making my lunch during that time. I put my phone away. And I'm, like, really being intentional with how I'm cutting it and not for the beauty. I mean, I love the beauty of everything anyway, um, the presentation, <laughs> but I am doing it as like a, wow, this is real food and I am going to put this in my body and I want to be intentional about how I'm processing it and that I'm not just shoving it in my mouth to continue on with the rest of the day. And so I've actually asked, you know, my team, hey, I'm going to take an hour um, for lunch and I'm going to completely check out. I'm going to or check in. I always say plug in and or mm -hmm. like plug out and check in with myself. Um, and and so that's what been what's been really interesting, too, is that when this is all over, how do we how do we maintain this space that we've had to mm -hmm to let those voices come up and listen and take the time to actually appreciate our food and appreciate our, our well being, and not just go back into life the way we did before. I think it's, uh, we've got to acknowledge that food is really our healthcare. So mm -hmm. instead of thinking about the future and all the things that you might need, consider food your healthcare now. And, you know, when we look at this and what's happening in the world right now, globally, the universe is being called to tune in, right? To shut down. We've been called into our houses to tune in. I love that you said that. And also check in. So I know it's so tempting to um, wait until Monday, wait until next week, wait until this uh, lockdown ends. But consider the fact that all of the health habits that you start now are things that are going to give you an upper hand with going out into the world. Life is going to look different for all of us. And I think that if you want to be prepared and really use this as an opportunity to reset, right? Reset your mind, your body, your spirit at a cellular level, reset, then use now as that time and um, honor the ritual around eating. So most of us eat, like you said, you know, eat while working, eat while scrolling, eat while driving. Mm -hmm. And again, you know, our bodies cannot digest food or assimilate food when we're in a state of stress. Stress is fight or flight, right? Yes. Our bodies can break down food, digest food, which means it's going to give you more energy, which means it'll be able to assimilate all of the beautiful nutrients from the foods that you're eating to give you more energy and more health mm -hmm. if we're in a state of rest and digest and this is where the power really comes from. And I know that you'll probably notice an instant difference in the way that you digest your food. And I think that that's everything. Go back to how you're digesting everything because it's how you digest it all. One simple change needs to lead to the next. Yeah. And the most powerful thing that you can do is start gathering that evidence now. Mm -hmm. Chances are you have a lot of evidence of the things that don't make you feel good, the things that don't make you happy, the things that cause you stress, the things that cause you anxiety. But instead, every day, look for evidence for the things that make you feel good, the mm. things that give you peace. And when a, when a you know, plate of food makes you feel good, there's nothing more awesome than looking down at a, like a colorful plate of fruits and veggies or a meal that you've cooked or something that's been prepared for you if you're lucky enough. Mm -hmm. And you consume that energy. You know, When you live at an ashram, for example, the food is made in community and it's blessed. And you take energy of the food, um, the soil of the food that the food was grown in, all of the effort, if you think about the amount of people that it takes to get that food from a farm to your table, it's a lot of energy. It is. So consider you're taking all of that in and really bringing back this kind of sacred process of food being something that can nourish you versus food being something that will deplete you.
We want to look yes. for nourishment and it's like the word of the year, right? Nourish yourself. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you so much, Mona. You are just a, a divine light just shining on all of us and radiating so beautifully. And I just want to tell everybody that, you know, you can go to monasharma.com right? Monasharma.com. You can go to mm -hmm. um, at Mona Sharma, her Instagram to, to find more information and just to follow along and just stay connected. I feel like, you know, when you find your people, just like get connect with them. And so I feel like you're my people. I want to connect with you. Mm -hmm. And we're so grateful that you have been here and supporting Kinergy and um, want to share your your expertise. And then of course, you're the founder of Hickama Life as well. So go check that out, everybody. And I, I would love to sit and talk for a hundred more Forever. hours. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I just, I'm really grateful for my own personal journey with you and that I, um, I finally feel like I, I have, I had a chance that I'm not just, um, calling you up and be like, I want to do a cleanse and then starting tomorrow and then ah, I have to do it. Da, 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 da. It's like, no, we, the minute I called you, it was like, oh, it took another week for us to really decide if that was the right thing. And then oh, I've God. had time to prep and to, to really acknowledge why I want to do this. So I'm just personally grateful for you and my relationship, but then also for everyone watching and feeling now that they have, they have a friend and an expert to look to that they can trust. And I think that that's the most important thing is that, you know, with Kinergy, I, I want to be able to, and Kinergy wants to be able to have trusted resources that, mm, um, that are very educated and based in, in science and love and aligned and all of the things. So I appreciate you. Thank you so, so much. You too. Kinergy is everything to you. I love you so much. And just remember feeling great in your mind and your body. It's your birthright. It's your birthright. I love that. <laughs> Thank you so much. I love you, girl. You too. Love I'll you talk too. to you later. Bye. Bye. So thank you guys so much for coming on and listening to the beautiful advice and guidance that Mona um, has shared with us um, really at the end of the day, the power is within us and it is our birthright as Mona said. So um, I hope that that was uh, inspiring and um, heart if it was inspiring and that you're excited to, uh, yes, I see it, um, to, to just check in with yourself and, and ask what you need. And it's not a pressure to to lose weight or get that summer beach bod. It's not about that. It's about how do I want to feel? How do I want to show up in the world today and, and really use food as our health care, um, especially in these times. So appreciate you all so much. Adore you. Mwah. Love you. Uh, tomorrow we are going to be live again at 11 a.m. And I'm going to be doing a Q&A with Jasmine, our, another guide. And she is just magic beyond magic. So I cannot wait for you guys to meet her. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Oh, no, that's not tomorrow. I lie. Nikki is teaching tomorrow. Oh, my goodness. Nikki's teaching tomorrow at 11. Jasmine is at 11 on Thursday. <laughs> Mixing my days up. All right. Love you guys. Mwah. Bye.